They're coming for us. Get them. Get them. They're coming in hot. I got one. I got one. Don't get cocky, kid. But it's a Pop Bros podcast. What do you mean it's a podcast? You haven't been you haven't been shooting? They're all over the place. Well, no, but, but they've got all sorts of good shows like Pencil and Ink Reviews and The Guy Huddle and Players vs. Podcast. I mean, was I supposed to? Yes. The, 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 what? How many podcasts do they have? There's tons. You got other ones like The Accidental Wrestling Fan and Take Aim Outdoors. That kind of sounds like we should make podcasts, not war. What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we're speaking the language of bromance. Hey, man. What's up, sir? So I have a funny Ooh. story that happened last night, actually. So uh, Tiffany uh, had a girl's night out. And uh, usually whenever that happens, I offer to be the DD. Because what's more fun than picking up a bunch of drunk girls at 2 in the morning? I can think of like five things right <laughs> right now. Sleep being probably number one. That there's one. Uh, but I was already up. I was playing some video games because I just got a new uh, the new. There's baseball two. Game. Yeah, there's two. <laughs> so I got the new baseball game. So I was playing that most of the night. But uh, I head down there. She's like, "Hey, we're ready. Can you pick us up at Jimmy John's?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure. No, no big deal." So I'm driving down. I'm about three or four minutes away. She's like, oh, by the way, uh, we have this really drunk guy hanging around us that we need to get give him a ride home. Oh. I'm like, awesome. Because, I mean, it's one thing if somebody I know probably puked in my truck, but if it's somebody I don't know, that would make it even worse. Well, and also you, you like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is just me, but, like, I always have like, run through my head, like, what has this drunk guy been doing hanging around my wife all night? Yeah, I had that thought, too. I'm like, I wonder if, like, this guy's been hanging around all night. But Tiffany and them usually aren't like that. They're they're more of like... Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, rules for, like, in my head, like, uh, being around my wife is like being around my kids. Like, <laughs> I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about what you're doing, or thinking, I'm worried about what everyone else is doing yeah, and thinking. I agree. Well, because, like, I, I'm a guy. I was a guy that, you know, tried to pick up girls. And I never went up. Well, I guess I probably did because that's just me. But, like, I don't envision most guys going up to girls just to be like, hey, what's going on, ladies? Let's talk and become, you know, just friends. And, you know, let's talk about girl things. Like, my thought is, like, a dude's out drunk. He's got one thing on his mind. He's like, I want to figure out how to bang each of you chicks at the same time. How can we right. make that happen? <laughs> right. And then you're like, oh, shit, I just said that out loud. <laughs> and then I, and then you run away and hide. <laughs> or do we have the same experiences at bars? Maybe that's just me. Well, mine is I play the snare in my head that I'm going to go up and be like suave, debonair type thing, but... I trip and fall on the way up there. And I'm like, oh, hey, somebody, somebody uh, put a banana on the floor. Whoa, you're <laughs> pretty. <laughs> you have very beautiful nose tips, <laughs> earlobes. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm like, awesome. Like, I'm just envisioning we're going to pick this dude up and he's going to puke in the truck. Or, you know, the thought did run through my head. like, well, has this dude been following them around the whole night? Yeah. And I get there and I pull in and like she's sitting there rubbing this guy's back and he is like sitting in Indian position, like with his hands on his like calves, like he's in a complete so he's like, like like meditating. Uh, yeah, it almost looks like he's meditating, but he he's is trying to find his inner drunk <laughs> Zen. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany's like he's cultured. He I, I like him. He's <laughs> cultured. <laughs> and I walk up and she sees me and she's like, he just started to puke. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> and you're like, all right, drunken master, let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I mean, it's one of those things. It's like three in the morning. I'm not really in the mood to be out there dealing with, you know, some drunk kid. And like, I'm trying to like, okay, where's like his friends? Where's his girlfriend? Like, you know, this guy can't be here by himself. Yeah. And so she's rubbing his back and her friends, not like rubbing it, like just kind of like trying to like keep him awake and everything. And the girls that were with him went across the street to get some Mexican food because it's like, well, maybe if we get him some food and he pukes that up, he might feel better. 
I love drunk logic. I know. It's like, okay. I'm, also, I'm, is it like, is it just me or I, I don't know if you have it. Like, I hate it if I'm drunk and if I'm drunk to the point where like there's there's there might there might be puking going on or if I'm at the point where I just need to go home and get into a bed or get into a bed in general, like I don't want to be messed with. Like, I don't want to be surrounded by people and then and then everybody what, what ends up happening is. Is I sit there and then everybody there's like I'm surrounded by people and they're all arguing over what the best thing is for me at that <laughs> moment. And they're all just like maybe two or three shots away from being in the same state you are. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, well, no, he's he needs he needs bread because they <laughs> eat the bread and then the bread soaks up the alcohol. And then the and then the next person is like, no, he we, we just need to pick him up. He, is he is he falling asleep? We got. Keep him awake. Keep him awake. He, he can't. He might not. He might pass out. Like I. Oh, that drives me insane. Like I. Like there was. There was one night. Like I. I drank way too much, and uh, among other things, and I remember I was sitting in a at a table, and I was like, you know, I hit that state where I was like, okay, I was like, everything's gonna be fine. You've had too much. I was like, you just need to sit still for a little <laughs> bit and let let your equilibrium come back. And then once that happens, then you need to leave immediately and go home. Now, at this point, like, I lived like a block away from where I was. Oh, okay, so you're definitely walking distance and all that. Right. I, yeah, easily walking distance. It was like a five minute walk, if that. It even, you know, it's a it even a, like a five minute stagger. So <laughs> I'm sitting there and then all of a sudden here comes somebody like, here, let's go outside. Let's go outside. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm like the second I start moving. I was like, at the point I'm at right now, I was like the second I start moving. It's over. Like I'm throwing up. Like yeah. that's what's going to happen. And they're like, no, it'll be fine. Just go outside. I'm like, OK, let's go. <laughs> I stood up. I took five steps as soon as I was out the front door, like right in front of the door to the bar. I'm just like yeah. <laughs> all over. And my sister was with me. <laughs> and these people, these people started looking at me. And all of a sudden, my sister, God bless my God bless my sister. She jumps and she's like, what? Dude can't puke on the sidewalk? What you staring at? What's up? <laughs> Why are you staring at him? <laughs> so I do um, that, and then I take two steps over to the to the building next door and sit on a step. So then, of course, the argument happens, like going on around me. And if I, I'm like, I'm like, everybody, just shut up. I was like, I'm gonna sit here for ten minutes, and then I will walk myself home. And they're like, no, 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 we'll care. I'm like, no, nobody. I was like, I've not been care. I'm not gonna get carried home. So I sat there for about like 15 minutes, and then I just like stood up like a shot, and I'm like, okay, let's go. And I just do 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 walked like people were talking. I wasn't even listening. I just like walked as fast as I could to my apartment, and then just bam on the bed and slept for like eight hours straight. Yeah, that's the any I'm sure if it's like me, like when you get that drunk and like you're about ready to wake up, you're like, Yeah, just keep sleeping. Don't don't yeah, wake yeah. up. I don't even honestly, I don't I I'm sure those moments happened, but I I I couldn't remember them. Like I just remember laying on the bed and there were there were people in my apartment that <laughs> followed me and I laid on the bed. And I'm like, leave me. I was like, leave my key by the somewhere. And then I was out. Yeah, it's always funny. Like when whenever you get those group of people together, like all of a sudden, like there's that one or two people who are like, because they're drunk, now they're doctors. They know exactly what right. they need to do. They're drinking. Like, no, I, I saw it on WebMD. I, I know what to do. <laughs> like they're fucking drunk EMTs. I'm like, all right. What do but, you what do you got, Dr. House? <laughs> But like this kid, he was, I mean, he was at the point where like he couldn't walk like he, Oof. yeah, it was, 
it was probably borderline need to go to the hospital, maybe. And really? Was, yeah, and that was the argument. Everybody's like, do we need to just take him to the hospital? And so as I show up, like, I, I, I didn't really know what to expect when I showed up. Because whenever you hear just drunk guy, like, I'm expecting someone to be, like, to someone being all handsy with the girls and, you know, just being, like, yeah. the fun, drunk kind of thing. I wasn't exactly. expecting, someone like... Someone that's just, like, a little belligerent or yeah. whatever. I wasn't expecting the, uh, you know, almost dead 22-year-old kid. And that's the thought that ran to my mind. like, we're going to put him in my truck. We're going to start driving him home. And he's going to, like, puke in his mouth and die in my truck. <laughs> So we're trying to figure out what to do with them. And when I showed up, like the, the girls that I knew were there with Tiffany. And then there was this other random guy that I assumed was with one of the girls because she was kind of talking with him. So I was like, well, maybe that's her boyfriend or, or something. Um, but apparently he just showed up randomly. And <laughs> this, is the, oh God. this is this is the other thing that's fun with, with drunk people. So it's getting late, and we're like, okay, well, we need to get you in the truck. We'll get you home. He told Tiffany his address before he, like, got even further in his drunken state. So he knew where he right. lived. Okay. So, so he kind of leans back, and this other guy walks up, and he's like, I, I can take care of this. He gets kind of, you know, in, like, the coach position on his hands, you know, his hands on his knees. He's like, <laughs> he's like dude, you got to get up. You got to get going. I've been where you are, bro. I've done that before. I've been in the exact same place you are. Oh, kind of paraphrasing, God. but pretty oh, much I this. I hate that guy. <laughs> he's oh. like, he's like, you know, if you don't want to get a DUI or get arrested or anything, you know, you got to get up and get home. You can't sleep here. And oh, I mean, God. somebody, I was like, is this like a bartender or something? Because that's something like a bartender would say when they want you to leave their bar. But this is just like on right. the street. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like. Meanwhile, he's doing this like four horsemen, like win one for the Gipper speech to this <laughs> dude. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so he's he's. Uh, I've been in the same place you are, man. I got a DUI, I got arrested, but you got. I care about you, man. I don't even know you, and I care about you. <laughs> he's like, you got all these people here that don't even know you that care about you, man. I'm like, he's not on a fucking bridge trying to jump off. He just drank too much. <laughs> So he, he finally lifted, we lift him up and get him in the truck and the kid bless his heart. I mean, he, he knew he had too much to drink and he wasn't a belligerent drunk. Like he wasn't mean or rude, but he just keeps apologizing the whole time we get him in the truck. And so he oh, see, like, I, I'm cool with that. Like, I like, like that's, yeah, I don't like, I don't want to have to fight somebody be like, yeah. dude, you go. Yeah. Like let's, let's take you home. No, no, <laughs> I got to get to my car. Where's my, where's my car? I got, uh, uh, I'll just sleep in the car. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. But, but the story, so I feel bad. I mean, I feel bad for the kid because his friends just left him downtown. So yeah. it'd be the equivalent of me getting drunk, not knowing where I am, probably almost about ready to piss and shit myself. And you'd be like, eh, I'll leave him here on the street and see if he's there in the morning. Hopefully he doesn't get stabbed. Yeah. And it always seems like whenever I'm out, like I always end up stuck with these people. Like there's been constant times where I've had to take people home simply because I'm considered the most soberest. Uh, that's dangerous. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know if like, I don't know if his buddies left him there because there's another girl. So this is kind of another like topping to this story. So as Tiffany's kind of, you know, rubbing his back while he's laying there on the ground, uh, she's like, yeah, his, I don't know if it's his girlfriend or who it was, but whenever we saw him outside, cause the, the way they found him was they left Jim, like walked out of Jimmy John's onto the downtown street. Uh -huh. And he was, this girl was just yelling at him. And Tiffany said she smacked him like five times in the face. <laughs> I was like, get up, Josh, get up. <laughs> and uh, I, I guess that's when the girls went over and like, hey, what's going on? You know, what, can we help? Um, and this is this is Tiffany. She's very much the kind of person if she sees like a stray dog, she wants to help it. So I feel like this is what that kind of scenario was like. This is a dog that's lost its way. We need to save it. It's getting beat by its current owner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, stop. That's not nice. And then the drunk guy sits down Indian style and looks up at Tiffany and then Sarah McLaughlin starts <laughs> playing. In the arms of the angel. For $2 a day, you can support <laughs> a drunken college kid. 
So this girl, this girl had already left by the time I got here, and Tiffany says, "Yeah, she just says, hey, 'Hey, I'm gonna go get pizza. I'll be back.' <laughs> so, <laughs> so this girl that's stay. supposed you yeah, stay, <laughs> stay, you stay here. <laughs> I don't think he's going anywhere. Maybe I should chain him up just in case. <laughs> I just imagine the girl's like, he likes his back rubbed. If, you know, if you do that, he'll love you forever. So, you know." <laughs> I'll go in and I'll get some water to leave out for you. <laughs> so the girl finally starts walking back and Tiffany is like, oh, yeah, I, I don't like this girl. She was smacking him. She's really she's just a bitch. I'm like, OK, Oh God. And yeah. So I'm expecting just, you know, I, I really don't want to deal with that because Tiffany yeah. had been drinking, but she wasn't super drunk. But she's a feisty girl when she drinks. And like I was just expecting just something. Uh, so. But the girl Where are comes. Where you taking my man? I'll take him wherever I want, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Oh God. Tiffany, let's just go home. <laughs> but but the girl shows up back shows back up with two things of pizza, and I'm expecting like this is his girlfriend or a real close friend. She's like, yeah, I haven't seen him in like five years, so I don't really know him that well. Oh God. <laughs> and, and I'm processing in my head like, why the hell are you beating the shit out of him, man? <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, we were friends in high school. I haven't seen you for 10 years. Just start smacking him in the head. Yeah, no, it's tough love. It's tough love. <laughs> so she finally goes into a bar to do something. She's like, just wait out here for like 30 minutes. I'll be right back. And I kind of oh, forgot God. all about that. Yeah, because I was like, I, you know, I want to get home. I want to get this kid home. You know, yeah. whatever. So back to the other guy does his thing, you know, trying to pump him up to get him in the truck. I wanted to throw him in the bed of the truck because I really didn't want him puking in my vehicle. Yeah, uh, that's I, I was that's why I was I was gonna ask like if you just just throw them in the back. That's yeah. You're like but, lay down and close your eyes. Yeah. Don't look up. Just don't <laughs> as, look up. As we were walking back there, uh, the, the poor kid. I mean, <laughs> I was like, dude, should we just throw him in the back of the truck? He's like, please, please don't throw me in the back of the truck. Please don't <laughs> throw me in the back of the truck. <laughs> uh, so uh You're like Mexican drug lords You're gonna put like a hood <laughs> over his head. Yeah. Uh, I wanna live. I have so much I to wanna live for. go in the back of the truck. <laughs> uh <laughs> so so we one there's there's four girls with me and then this kid. So my truck's full. And the girls had just come yeah. back with his food. And this is the other thing of drunk logic that I don't get. They have like this kid can barely stand. He can't like he we could we had to force give him water. He wasn't able to hold the cup by himself. Right. So they get him like a quesadilla or something and he gets in the back of the truck and he's leaning against one of the girls and Tiffany gets in. I don't know who who gave it to him, but somebody hands him this food like, "Here, eat this." What happens? He just drops it right on the floor of the truck cuz he has <laughs> he has no mobility in his hands. And I look back and see that on the floor and I'm like, all right, this and Tiffany gets out, tries to start throwing it outside. I'm like, just leave it. He's probably gonna puke anyway. And that's when his right. eyes, his li eyes light up. Look at me. He's like, I'm not gonna puke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no motor function. I, I've, I've made, I have paralysis right now. But, but throwing up is not on the table. <laughs> and there's only a handful. Not even an option, dude. <laughs> not even, no go, bro. No go. Uh, so that, I mean, it's just like it just is lit up. I'm not gonna puke. I'm like, all right, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, but sure enough, we we pull out. Tiffany's got a Jimmy John's bag for him just in case. We back out. We get to the first stoplight, and it's just like, oh god, he's gonna puke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I assume I, I don't even look back, so I'm just I'm not in the mood to see somebody you know hurling all over my truck, right? Uh, but it ends up he's just kind of dry heaving into a bag, so it really didn't turn out to be anything. Uh, but the whole time we're driving, uh, Tiffany keeps saying, you know, do we need to take him to the hospital? Should we take him to the hospital? And he just keeps repeating back. He's like, no hospital, no hospital, no cops, no cops, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we dropped the girls off. Uh, we're heading back to his place. Um, it's, it's pretty close to where we live. Not real, real oh, close. Oh, so you didn't enough. drop him off first. I would have dropped him off first. I wanted to, but this is the other thing at drunk logic. The other girl's like, Oh, Hey, can we turn here? Cause this is where we live. I was like, well, I mean, I don't really want her just dealing with him in the backseat. 
but it's yeah. drunk logic where it's like, well, you know, good luck, guys. We'll see you later. So don't die. Yeah. Hopefully, this, hopefully this isn't, you know, some elaborate trick. <laughs> you being punked. Yeah. We show up. He's like, fuck you, bitches. I'm alive. And next thing I know, I'm in Mexico missing organs. <laughs> Not in the back of the truck. Not, <laughs> Not in the bed of the truck, please. Not in the bed of the truck. I have so much to live for. Uh, the best part about this whole thing, though, uh, so, well, not the best part, but we pull into his place, um, and it's super dark. It's it's uh, it's a duplex kind of area. And Don't tell me he's like, this isn't my place. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I pass a few of them, and I can't see the sign, so I, pull, I park because there's like three houses that are duplexes and i can't tell which one's his okay you know, map map quest and all that said it should be right there so i park i tell tiffany i'm like hey just hold here i'll i'll see if i can figure out which one's his and i the first one we're at isn't it but like three houses down was the one so i mean it's i just pulled out like it's right there and so i say yeah yeah you know i get back in the truck i tell tiffany i'm like yeah we found it and she's like five one five or says whatever his number is I was like yeah yeah that's it and he's like that's my number. He keeps repeating, that's me. That's me. I'm like, well, we got to get down a little further. That's me. That's me. <laughs> you uh, found it. <laughs> like, like you just discovered Mount Doom. Yeah. Uh, so we get him out of the truck, and the lights in, in the, the place are on, so his roommates are there. Uh, so we start, I'm carrying him, and Tiffany's walking up, and it's, she's, you know, like I said before, she gets a little feisty when she drinks, and Right as we were pulling into his the apartment car, the uh, duplex complex, she's like, "I am going to give his roommates an earful when I show up." I said, "I put my foot oh. down, I'm like, no, you are not. No, please, <laughs> I, please don't. I am in no mood to get my ass kicked tonight for trying to do something good." <laughs> Here's what we're gonna do: we're gonna put this guy on the couch or whatever, like. Beanbag bag okay. chair, like inflatable, whatever, <laughs> as, whatever furniture they seem to have. And then we're going to leave. I was just wanting to put him on the front porch with a note and a blanket and just knock on the door and run. <laughs> meow, meow. So, so we're walking up to his, to his door and he has the bag of Jimmy John's that he kind of dry, her dry heaved in. <laughs> and he kind of lifts it up and looks at it. He's like, I don't even know what the fuck this is. <laughs> So I say, well, I think it's, I think it's your lunch, buddy. <laughs> so I say, I'm like, just go ahead and throw it in the rocks there. We'll get it in the morning. And he tries to throw it. It just kind of falls straight down on his, on the, <laughs> right in front of him. <laughs> and so we, uh, we knock on the door. Did I get it? Yeah, you got it. Dude. Yeah, you got it. Good job, buddy. Good job. You're doing good, man. You're doing good. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> So Tiffany, uh, Tiffany knocks on the door. And this uh, again, I'm glad she, I told her not to pick a fight with these guys because the dude that answered the door was huge, like <laughs> six two, you know, linebacker size. I was like, mm, no. Nope. Let me tell you something. My husband <laughs> had to deal with this shit, and he is not happy. <laughs> and you would not like him when he's not happy. Is that right? Uh, no, that's not. That's, that's not no, right. That's I, not, yeah, I, I don't have any problem doing this, sir. You know, no, that's not what you said five minutes ago, Sean. You say you're going to fucking kick this guy's ass. You get your fucking fighty pants on and get out here and fight my husband, or he's just going to come here and pull you out. Isn't that what you said, Sean? Fucking pull this pussy pants out. That's what you said. He said it, not and me. And he's like, what's your name? And then you're like, Richard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Richard, I'm, here's my address. Uh, um, Feel free to discuss this matter with me anytime. <laughs> Hang on, there's a knock at the door. <laughs> You're outside. Uh, I gotta go. <laughs> uh, but as as he opens the door, he kind of looks at us, and I'm holding the kid. I'm like, does this belong to you? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And we kind of drop him in there and just pull him inside, and they say thanks, you know, whatever. They, I was kind of hoping for a little bit more, because it's basically we saved your friend's life, essentially. Yeah. And all I hear is the doors closing. He's like, water, water. <laughs> uh, so that was that was our adventure last night. That sounds equally beautiful and horrible. Yeah, it's a, it was a good story. I was I was pretty pissed. 
Um, yeah. But it's one of those things when you walked in, you just saw this kid just, you know, everything was against him on that. I mean, your friends left you basically just to sleep on the street. Because, I mean, he right. Bu- I mean, I, the, the sad thing is, is I could totally see that situation happening to me completely like word, like word for word i could see that happening to me for this for the same reasons well what tiffany was saying too it's it, he's lucky like somebody nice found him because you know someone very easily could just you know took his wallet took his stuff you know if right. cops would have saw him they probably would have picked him up put him, him in the back jail. of a truck <laughs> yeah put him in the bed of a truck <laughs> not, not the bed not the bed fuck you dude we're not nice <laughs> oh shit can I have a blanket? No, no blankets for you, man. I'm sorry. I'm not going to puke. I'm not going to puke. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, who does that? I mean, who leaves? The only thing I can think of is his buddies left, and he was still hanging out with this girl, and his buddies were thinking that the girl would get him home, and yeah. then she pretty much just beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Decided to abuse him and then go get pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of work to beat the shit out of you. I need some ice for my hand and a pizza to sat- <laughs> satisfy my hunger. But we'll yeah, the pizza on it, and then I'll do ice. You do heat and then cold, right? <laughs> no, yeah. She did have two pieces, so I don't know if she got him a piece or not. Be funny if he she's he walking with the- like another guy. Be like, this is Tom's. <laughs> <laughs> he, he paid for the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting there he reaches up like the only thing he wants in this drunken state is a piece of pizza so he reaches up and she just smacks the fuck out of his hand she's like no no not for you no pizza for you did you get into chocolate did you get into chocolate <laughs> uh, I'm sorry he's usually such a good boy I don't I don't know what it is but yeah I felt I felt super bad for him we were, we were talking on the way home. It's like he could have, if I said he could have died or got raped or, you know, went to jail. One of those three was a possibility if we left him there. Exactly. Or more. Yeah. Or all three. Or see all of the above. <laughs> uh, the only other good story that we've had like that where I've picked Tiffany up is, well, we went out with her friend on her 21st birthday. <clears throat> And this girl just randomly jumped in my car as I was getting ready to pick him up. And her friend was in such a drunken state. When she got in the car, she recognized that this person wasn't part of the group. So she just starts belligerent and saying, get the fuck out of this car. I don't know who the (laughs) fuck you are. I'm like, it's fine. We'll just take her home. She's already in the car. I don't know what happened to her. We didn't take her home. So hope she's still alive. When you're when you're when you're that guy, like because I've because I've been that guy, like I'm at home and like I'll get this call and be like, hey, can you come pick me up or blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, sure. Like, I always have this like like you get there and then, OK, like you did, like you get there and there's this entire scene unfolded before you and you're like, what is the sequence <laughs> of events yeah. That led to this. It's like it's like when you walk in, like yeah, like you know, like when you have kids, it's like you walk in and like <laughs> all, like the entire room is decorated in crayon, and there's like flour on the floor, and you know, like they've decided to like paint you a mural, and you're like, <laughs> what? How was this? Like, ever a how good did idea? this entire scene unfold? Yeah, oh. it's and and like with the guy that was there, I'm like, okay, so maybe this is that girl's you know, girl's friend, or you walk up and, like, random people are making out, and you're like, okay, well, I guess they must know each other. And you find out later, it's like, no, they just met, like, two seconds before you got there. It's like, yeah, all right. I guess I'm glad I missed that, maybe. But anytime you ever have to go pick somebody up when they ask for a ride, it's never just what you think it should be. You know, showing up with a handful of the people that you know drunk, it's always something more. It's like, oh, we just found so-and-so. We've been friends for... 20 minutes lifelong yeah, and friends. it's it's it all it's all like you get there and it, the whole the whole time it's just like how deep down this rabbit hole do i want to go <laughs> do you just want to try and shove everybody in the vehicle get them home so you can get get home or what the fuck do you have to do right well that was an equally beautiful yet horrible story all at <laughs> once it was an adventure i figured it was perfect for this i i i honestly I honestly haven't haven't done much. I did have the only interesting thing I have done is uh, I went to a party. 
I heard this. So you've been doing, uh, like, you've been hosting some karaoke, right? On on the side, on the side, I've been doing, like, some DJ work and some, you know, and and whatever. And uh, usually it's been for, like, bars and stuff like that. But uh, I recently had a show come up, and it was for a party, like a, like a private kind of, you know, event or whatever. And I, you know, I was, I mean, money was decent and... It was it was a little drive away, but I was like, oh, whatever. I was like, you know, it should be kind of laid back, you know, whatever. And I found out that uh, the group that this party was for was a group of swingers. Oh, there you go. So right? when I heard this, my first thought, because I, I think we talked about it before you decided before it happened. And so you tell me this, and my mind instantly goes to like that porn. You know, this is this is what's going to happen. You're going to walk in, and there's just going to be naked, sexy people all over the place, just right. banging it's each just other. Gonna, like you walk, like I'm just running porn music for an orgy. There's just like I'm sitting there, and I'm like there, I'm just playing music, and there's just like this giant orgy in front of me. It's like scenes from Caligula. <laughs> like that's what I had pictured in my head too. Don't worry. So, okay, so so that's that's what we think. Now the. The first the first thing that I have to do before before I do anything is I have to run this by my wife, because obviously I don't want to be that. I I don't want to, you know, be like, hey, how was the show you did? Oh, it was fine. It was the swingers event. It was a what? And I'm like, oh, that's that's one of the things you you definitely need to run by, because even if even if it's super innocent, because obviously you're not going to participate. But, exactly. you know, if, if somebody finds out behind, after the fact, it's like, well, why didn't you tell me that before? You know, instantly wheels are turning and questions are being asked. And right. Right. And and I've I've this isn't I, you know, I this isn't my first rodeo. I've been in this game long enough to know this. This is a pertinent detail, even yeah. though it's innocuous. It's a pertinent detail. <laughs> so I run up by my wife and I'm like, hey, you know, I was like, I'm going to go do this DJ thing for this, uh, for a swingers party. And the, and the response I got was actually kind of surprising. She's like, well, can I go with you? (laughs) So then the wheels start turning in my head (laughs) and I'm like, well, I, what, what do you mean? Can you go? go?" (laughs) Now I'm like, then you like read for like small facial tics. You're like, you're, you're trying to read her like a poker player. Yeah. It's like, this okay. Oh, oh, the eyebrow kind of went up. But it, is that does that mean she's is she like interested? Like I don't. Where is she going with this? I yeah. don't understand. You you totally you totally think she's just fucking with you. You play it's like all right. So we're gonna go and I'm gonna try and bang this dude. I'm gonna try and bang this chick and I'm gonna try and bang that other dude. And she's like, oh, that would be so hot. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> what, what just happened here? So like so I I'm I'm heading to this to this event. And I'm thinking that either nothing's going to happen and it's, you know, it's just going to be like, you know, regular thing or something insane is going to happen. So you're thinking both ends of the uh, the spectrum. It's either going to be, you know, what you're expecting. It was. It style. was all over the place. And I honestly had no expectation of anything. I had no idea, like, what was going to happen. And I feel like I'm building up, but so- I'm, I'm sorry to be anticlimactic with it, but it, 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 it was fine. Like, nothing <laughs> there, really happened. There were no money shots. Although I will say, like, I, I will say that honestly, like, uh, my wife and I hadn't, like, kind of had been out like out and about in a while i mean we've kind of like you know i mean like we hang out and like occasionally we'll you know go out and grab a drink or something like that we haven't really done like a night out night out for a little bit and so like both of us went and you know i hosted i was playing music and and whatever and like you know getting people to dance and like you know Amanda was kind of walking around and asking people if there was stuff they want to hear and kind of chit chatting and and stuff like that. And honestly, it was it was a really fun night for both of us. Like we just like hung out and played music and danced and like there were dances that we did that people didn't know how to do. <laughs> well, you said the So we were like kind of like it was kind of like it's kind of like that scene in Dirty Dancing where like, you know, like Oh, uh, we're Patrick Swayze and the blonde girl. Like, 
<laughs> do this like crazy dance and everybody's like completely enamored with it. And then they go and they grab other people to like show them, you know, how to dance and stuff like that. Are you just saying that so people envision you as Patrick Swayze at this party? Is that what you're wanting? Yes, I am the <laughs> Patrick Swayze at this party. Uh, I envision you trying to do that and be their guy from Roadhouse at the same time. Yeah. Roadhouse. And then I punched the guy in the face. <laughs> That's a Roadhouse. But no, it was like, it was a fun night. Like, we just, like, you know, we hung out. We made sure everybody had a good time. And, like, because, like, when it comes to, like, doing something like that, like, you know, if you're, like, the DJ for a party, like, you're playing, like, you're, you know, you're in control of the music. Not only are you in control of the music, but I feel like to a point you're in control of, like, the in general tempo of the event. You know, you play fast songs and people are up and moving and you play slower songs and, like, you kind of set the tone. And I always saw it as something like you're the host of the evening, you know? Like, it's not just you're sitting behind a booth and, like, you know, I'll play this song, I'll play this song, I'll play this song. It's you're 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 hosting. It's like it's like having people over at your house. You know, you want to you want to try and facilitate like a fun time for everybody. And like it was cool. Like both of us, like me and and my wife, we were like working together and it was fun. It was really fun. What was the uh, the age range of everybody? there? Um, I would say between like mid to late 20s to. 40 plus. Oh, so there were some younger people there? Yeah, there were there were there were a few that were, you know, I would say around yeah, I'd say, you know, late 20s, maybe maybe 30s. You know, or like like either at 30 or early 30s. And I don't know if you can speak on this, so then what was the attractiveness rating? Was um it- Yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, I mean, I don't know. I think it's it's all subjective to me, so I don't really, you know, that I mean, on, on that scale, I don't know. Like my ten might be your four. Yeah, that's true. I always just wonder in those places if I mean, because age wise, I always feel like it's older people. I yeah. don't know why. I, I I would say a majority of them were older than me. But there was an interesting conversation I had with somebody. And this was after, like, you know, things had wrapped up and I'm packing up and getting ready to go. And uh, there was this guy and he was talking about how they were trying to find, like, other places to, like, host this event. And uh, they got turned down at a lot of places because of the nature of the group that they have and what they do. And, you know, like, you know, just, I mean, what they're about. And I thought, like, that was really, I found that really silly to me because from what I witnessed, and I mean, I kind of knew this going in. I mean, I guess, you know, like like you said, you know, everybody has that expectation, like, holy shit, this is going to be like scenes from Caligula. But honestly, like, I didn't see a difference between anything that was happening in front of my eyes to anything that was happening, say, in a bar. Like, no difference. Yeah, it's just the perception. I mean, you say swingers and... I mean, it's just like whenever you say, shoot, I don't know, any, anything somebody doesn't really understand. If you say it's going to be this swinger party, everybody's thinking what I'm thinking. It's just this big, you know, satanic ritual almost where people are just banging yeah. on dead goats and, you know, all this stuff. And right. the funny thing is, you know, most of those people are saying, hey, you can't, we don't want that in our town. They're probably doing that stuff in their house anyway. It's just they're not exactly. open about it. And I mean, and when you, I mean, like, like you think about it, like, you know, Anything that's going to happen is not going to happen in this, you know, public forum. Like, people are going to go off by themselves to private rooms and and do and do whatever. I mean, they're all I mean, everybody's an adult. Like, why can't people just be adults? And I'm talking and I'm and honestly, I'm speaking to the people that had turned them down and had, you know, been derogatory towards them or whatever. Like, they're just people. Like, they're just adults that are doing adult things. Like, honestly, like I said, like, they're everybody's just kind of sitting around and chit-chatting and, and whatever. And anything, quote-unquote, torrid that happens, happens behind closed doors. Do you think a lot, does it seem like a lot of people are making 
connections like they were going to go do that later on or was it more of just hey we enjoy doing this stuff maybe we'll you know catch up in a month or two and see if we want to do something i i think it was a little maybe a little of both i mean obviously like you know i'm not one for eavesdropping but i would say it's probably a little of both just you know like body language and stuff like that but yeah i just i don't know i thought it was really it 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 just the whole thing kind of struck me as very silly that some people would think that like if it was like say like a singles event if if they if they had sold themselves off as like a singles group then nobody would have a problem even though the exact same things would be going on <clears throat> but the sanct- sanctity of marriage isn't at stake though i think that's kind of the especially being in the midwest i think that's a big thing that people focus on you know i guess which is funny. I don't know. Do you do you think that we do you think that we as a I've always found that Americans in general seem to be very and I don't know I I think this is just I think this st- all stems from our puritanical roots as as we were all pilgrims. But it seems like we're very sexually constipated as a as a society as you know as a, as a country. Cause like you look at like look at film, like in, in other countries you look at film in like France and like in you know other places, it seems like they're more open about sexuality, and not so abhorrent to seeing scenes of you know sex or anything like that. Yeah, I don't. I can't really put my finger on it. I know if you look at. I don't remember what era they called it, but it's really like the hippie era, like the the mid '60s to the mid '70s. I mean, we're we are a lot more conservative today. You know, like my generation is a lot more conservative than that generation that was in the '70s and '60s. Well, I mean, to be fair, like back then they didn't worry about things like STDs and stuff like that. <laughs> you know how much condoms cost back in the day? I don't know. We never used them. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I, I don't know. I think the the STD scare that happened, you know, like you know, you had AIDS and everything came out in the eighties and stuff like that, and people are like, "Holy shit!" So I don't know. That, I think is that what's put us in our sexual funk or sexual no, constipation? As you, put I, it? I, I don't think so. I think, I think it, I think it's been there. And honestly, like I said, I think it stems from just the fact that our puritanical. I think we we. We come from a very puritanical culture. Like, you know, pilgrims landed here and they had very strict and traditional views when it came to sex and sexuality. Yeah, but in the like I was saying, in the 60s and 70s, that kind of opened up. But was it the, the STD scares that, you know, people said, well, now we need to teach kids that these things, you know, these are the consequences from it. And so knowing those consequences, instead of it being a religious consequence, it's more of a health consequence. And so we've scared eh, a generation. Not necessarily, because, I mean, there's still, I mean, I mean, it, it's still sold that, you know, protected sex usually, you know, the protected, protected sex, you know, helps, you know, keep that down, the risk of the risk of STDs. Yeah, yes, that's true. I honestly think it's a cultural thing because, like I said, you look at like places like Europe and you know, and and Asia, like Japan or France or the UK or Spain, and Greece, like they seem to have a very m- much a much more liberal view of of sex and sexuality. But the one thing I find interesting is that the way that we view sex, these other countries view violence. Like I, I, you see it very, very. You see it more in film. Is 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 the most stark example. Like movies that are overly sexual or have a very sexual nature, while would be considered acceptable in like European society, don't seem to fly here. But movies that are excessively violent seem to be much more widely accepted here, more than say Europe or Asia or somewhere like that. Yeah, it's always the argument. It's like little Timmy can't see a tit, but he can hear shit and fuck all you want. Well, I, I think it's little Timmy can't see a tit, but little Timmy can see two guys like beating the shit out of another guy with a pipe. Yeah. And that's not going to scar him for life. 
Right. Or little Timmy can pick up a game controller and beat a guy with a pipe, but he can't see a tit. Yeah, in, in the game. game. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what what that stems from. It's it's always really intriguing to think about. I mean, I I'm sure there's probably studies that skew it both ways, but um yeah, I don't know. It's always interesting to think about that though. Speaking of sex in games, I just saw uh I saw an article on uh this new game coming out uh The Witcher 3. Okay, haven't Have heard you... of it. Mm -mm. I I I uh I kind of played the second one. I think it was called like Witcher 2, The Death of Kings or The Assassination of Kings. I don't remember. But in The Witcher 3, it's supposed to be this very immersive kind of RPG, you know, RPG, kind of along the lines of Skyrim. Uh, but you can actually like have sex in the game. And <laughs> all right. One of the things I saw in the article, they were like, and they actually. You know how, like in in articles, you read, especially like on blogs on the internet and stuff like that, they'll have they'll have a quote or something, and then like in between breaks in the paragraphs, they'll put that quote in bold letters. Yeah, uh -huh. like big bold letters. Like you'll see like a direct quote that's you know in the story, and they use that to kind of graphically break up the story. The quote I saw in big bold letters: "Sex, you can have sex." On a unicorn. <laughs> uh, if that's not a uh, clickbait, I don't know what is. Like, I'd buy the game just for that. I'm like, on a, so what? On a unicorn? Uh, I'm kind of curious about that. I don't know if I would want to. Uh, I mean, would you want to play a game where you can have sex in it? I just don't know if there's much fun in that. I don't know. Could I be Hitler? Could you, why would get, you on want... the, get on Mr. Sparkles, Ava. <laughs> We will make sweet love on Mr. Sparkles. <laughs> That's a throwback. You're that welcome. That is a throwback. You can find that on episode 42, I think. Adolf Ooh. and Mr. Sparkles. Look at you calling it off. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that was my weekend. And it was fun. And I guess if there's if there's something that people should take away from it, it's that regardless of what a group does or if you think their behavior is whatever like they're they're adults and they know what they're doing and they're making conscious safe sane and consensual decisions and just let them be and i don't understand why we have to impose our puritanical views on these people because honestly like i said like these people it just seemed like they were just wanting to hang out and have a good time and what's wrong with i, I mean i would say like I, I don't know if you you have this problem but like trying to find a venue where adults can meet and have conversations with other adults in a in a relaxed setting that's getting kind of far and few between well yeah. like i go out to bars and like it's I mean, do you f like try and strike up a conversation with a group of people at a bar? Well, try to go to a bar in any kind of college town where people are your age. I mean, you walk in, it's 20. So this is something that happened. It's been maybe a year or two. So I was 26, 27, not that old. Okay. And it had been a bit, but since I've been in a like a dance club bar, I walked in, I felt like I was with a bunch of 12 year olds. Like, I don't know yeah. at what point you hit that. Cause I always hear older people say that I'm like, Shut up. It's it's not really like that. You're you're just exaggerating. But I walked in, I'm like, oh my god. Whatever these people... you fucking fogey. <laughs> Why don't you go back and sit on your rocking chair, grandpa? Oh. I <laughs> but I guess I'm that get off my lawn age now because I walked in. I'm like, who the fuck let all these kids in here? Turn that music <laughs> down. <laughs> can I get a can I get a, a bourbon on the rocks, please? Where's my smoking jacket? <laughs> uh, somebody puked in the, the sink over here. That is not, not the way I like to go out on a night on the town. <laughs> Idea highball. <laughs> but it's interesting. You were talking about um, like people trying to find those places like sex clubs, I think, are on the rise now on the coasts. I could see that. Um, there's a, I don't remember what it's called, but there's one in, 
California where they're offering franchises for it. I can totally see that. Because I would say, because here's the thing, and it's something that I didn't think about until, like I said, until I, you know, not participated, but was, you know, invited to, you know, be at one of these events. Um, It's like I said, you know, it's a, it's adults able to have, com- you know, like nice, relaxed conversations and meet other adults. I mean, it's almost like a it's almost like, you know, hobbyists getting together and they're able to, you know, kind of relax and meet new people. Because I don't know about you, but like I work, you know, 40 hours a week and, you know, this, that and the other. I don't really have much of an opportunity to meet new people and make new friends. Well, it, and most, most of the time when you meet new friends, it's from work. That's that's how you meet it, new people. Exactly. Exactly. Like aside from work, like. I don't really have an opportunity to meet new people. And so it's, I mean, I could totally see the appeal. I could see the appeal of just going to these places and not even, you know, not even with that sexual component in mind, just a chance to like hang out and meet new people and, you know, fun, interesting people that have a more liberal view of, you know, of sex and sexuality. Like I think in a way that kind of, that kind of puts a barrier down. Like everybody kind of has their barrier, their walls down, you know, like you go to a bar and everybody kind of has like their shields up, you know, and they, it's, it's hard to kind of break through and meet new people that way. But like in the, in this kind of setting, I think it would be a bit more relaxed and a lot easier to, you know, mingle, I guess. Do you think if they set those up? Cause I know I've never been to a gay bar, but they always talk about how, if you go to a gay bar and you let the like, if I as a guy go into a gay bar and a guy hits on me, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gay. I'm just here, you know, for whatever. They respect that and they'll leave you alone. Like they won't like. I think people have the intention that when you go to these types of places, people are going to be right on top of you trying to bang you. So in my just- in my experience, and I I'm in my experience when it comes to going to to gay bars because I've I've been to them and I like going to them and. In my experience, I've the, the it's drinks been exact- are free. <laughs> In my experience, it's been exactly that. Like, if somebody like if 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 somebody's like, you know, hey, do you want a drink? And and you're kind of like, you know, no, I'm 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 good. I appreciate, you know, I appreciate. It. Thank you. <laughs> you know, they usually, you know, I I I've never had an instance where someone got belligerent with me. Because I'm a straight guy. I'm a straight guy in a strange land. Honestly, I love I love going to gay bars. I really do. Like, because number one, it's usually like the music's better in terms of like just music that they're playing. Number two, usually the drinks are better because you have like, you know, decent, competent people behind the bar. And number three, it's fucking way clean. There's usually a lot of straight chicks that go to those places too from they do they they do like when i when i was single i i that's that was usually my quote unquote like hunting ground <laughs> because because the girls would go there and think they were safe and then they and then here i am and then you come Do-do-do. up like jaws yeah <laughs> do straight man shark i had a, i had a couple of friends of mine we were at another bar here you go. There was a couple friends of mine. We were at another bar, and I said I wanted to go to the gay bar. And there, and this, I had, one guy was like, "Okay, you know." One of my friends was like, "Yeah, whatever, that's fine." And my other friend was completely against it. He's like, "I have never been in there, and there is no reason for me to go there. I'm not going there. I'm not doing it." He's like, "I, I kind of want to like, you know, hang out and like, you know, maybe like meet a girl or something like that." I'm like, "Listen." <laughs> And I explained that whole thing, like, you know, shark in the water and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I don't know how. I think it was because he was really dr- uh, he was he was fairly drunk, but I managed to convince him to go. So we go and, you know, it was like <laughs> and, a couple and now, blocks. And now he does drag. <laughs> <laughs> so we go. It's a couple blocks. We walk up there and the whole time he's I could tell he's like trying to find a way to get out of it. I was like, no, man, it's fine. It's fine. I was like, just calm down. It's like, don't be such, you don't be so stuck up. So we get there and like, you know, like we have a couple of drinks and like, you know, hanging out or whatever. I can't find him. He like disappears. 
<laughs> You're checking the bathroom stalls, making sure he's not. I'm blowing walking some around dude. and lo- and lo and behold, I see this man making out with a girl. Like with her, we're there thirty minutes. He's making out with a girl in the corner. Nice. And it was a girl, right? It was a girl. Okay. So I'm standing outside. He comes outside to smoke a cigarette, and I'm like, "Oh." I can't go to the gay bar. I want to meet a girl. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was like, who was that? He's like, I have no idea. <laughs> Never got her name. Yeah, I can't remember. I thought there was like some comedian because whenever I, I don't know if he was a gay comedian or, or what it was, but he always talks about I, I'm sorry. I can't remember who it was. I hate, I like to give them credit for it, but I was talking about how like, it's always interesting when people say I don't want to go to a gay bar because I don't want to get hit on. It's like, listen, dude, you are as ugly as fuck. No gay dude's going to hit on you. Don't worry. (laughs) Always got a good chuckle at that. I've never been. I don't know if I'd be confident enough or comfortable enough to go. Uh, No real reason, but I think it's just that stigma that I have in my head still of what it would be like. I think you should let that go because it's it's honest. It's. It's 100 percent in your head. You're you you built you're building it up for no reason. That's usually like if it's the the it's usually the bar that I frequent if I'm out on a weekend, if it's like a weekend night, like a Friday night or a Saturday night and I'm kind of out and about and I'm looking for a place to like finish my night, like the last bar I'll go to before going home, I'll usually hit the gay bar because it's a place where everybody knows your name. That's true. Like the like the person at the door knows me by name. (laughs) I feel like I'm in. I feel like I'm in this like little club. It's nice. <laughs> he's 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 okay. He's one of the good straight guys. <laughs> I always well, I mean, like, didn't you ever want that like, you know, that neighborhood bar like that you like walk in and everybody's like, and, like they you know, like like your norm from cheers. Yeah, I think so. Um I always wonder I mean we, I think we grew up with the cheers as a show that we always watch and you'd think that's how it is. You walk into a bar and it's all good. You get a couple of drinks, but you know, in reality, you're just an alcoholic, and you have a problem. Right. And they're just kind of, you know, feeding in on. In reality, that. every single person on that show has a problem. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, series finale of Cheers should just been everyone in a meeting. Well, I mean, think about it. We had regulars at the bar we worked at, and we we never really thought very highly of them. That's so, true. <laughs> It's like, oh, well, he comes in at, you know, 530 and doesn't leave till one in the morning smashed. There was a guy there was a guy that was uh, that one night at that at that bar. There was one guy that uh, passed out on. There was a bench by the front door, passed out on the bench and then pissed his pants. Oh, goodness. <laughs> so I just... had to call him a cab to get him home. And yeah, the, the cab showed up. I told him what the ad, I was like, tell the guy where you're going. And he's like, blah, blah, blah. I was like, sounds good. And I go to put him in the cab and I go to put him in the back. And he's like, not the back, not the back. <laughs> uh, he's not going to puke in the cab, is he? I'm not going to puke. <laughs> <laughs> not going to puke. Uh, I turn around and he's sitting Indian style in pissy jeans. <laughs> Oh, man. Fun nights. All right. Well, uh, you want to do any uh, Richard's closing thoughts before we do some housekeeping? I don't know. I feel like I made it earlier. Swingers are people, too. And I think that I think it's, you know, I honestly, I think it's wrong for somebody to pass some sort of judgment on. On completely sane adults making consensual decisions about their own lives like they're not affecting you. They're not doing anything to you. Let them be. I'd say I that's that goes true for, you know, that for me that's true for, you know, swingers, for BDSM, for any sort of, you know, group that I would say is off the, you know, normal path. Like they're just people. So let them act like treat them like adults. There you go. There's your thought. I love it. I love it a lot. All right, well, I'll do a little bit of housekeeping. Housekeeping. Uh, go to our website. We're at languageofbromance.com. We're on Twitter at languageofbro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languageofbromance.com. Like us on Facebook and leave us a comment and subscribe on 
iTunes and Stitcher. Stitch Radio. Also, don't forget to check us out on the Pod Bros Network. The best podcast site on the internet. And Rich, it's yeah. always has been, right? Uh, I, I, what, which, which one are we supposed to say here? That yeah. always has been. <laughs> that one. We um, love you. <laughs> just a, a couple notes. Uh, we're coming up on our year anniversary. And again, if you get a chance, we'd love to have you guys as part of the show. So if you want to shoot us a message, uh, just send us a mp3 of your recording uh to eat the beaver at language and also when you send that shoot us a tweet so we know we got it and we have we'll a podcast wedding cake in the freezer we're gonna feed each other yep oh we definitely are one doing, year we're doing that now we're gonna get a picture of that with our hands intertwined It'd be beautiful and also Aww. also part of this we uh we've got some t-shirts on teespring.com if you search for Language of Bromance uh, podcast, you should be able to find those. Uh, those will be going on till the middle of May, I believe. So get those before they are gone. Yeah, get some bromance all over your chest. Yeah, and then there's a little pod bros on your back. Mm. Yeah, and show it to your friends. <laughs> be like, look, look what they did to me. Uh, all right, well, is there anything else before I close her out? No. All right, well, that's all the bromance we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we eat the beef beaver. Duh. I'm not going to puke, man. I'm not going to puke. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Get some bread. Don't take me to the hospital. Get some bread. Just give him some yogurt with granola and love. <laughs> He'll be fine in the morning. <laughs>